Welcome to Intabor Institute's Introduction to Enterprise Project Risk Management. Uh, today we're going to take a quick overview of our new uh, project, Enterprise Project Risk uh, software uh, available with version 6. <laughs> we'll show you the main views and give you uh, a high level of overview of how we manage risk and how risks are assessed and analyzed and managed in, in the uh, software. We will uh, follow up this video with more detailed views about exactly uh, how uh, risks are assigned, assessed, some of the user management, uh, the uh, risk approval process. But let's just go take a quick look at it. So we're actually in the software now and one of the things you'll look at, it's very similar to the uh, standalone. This is the, the I don't call it the desktop client that hooks into the database. And one of the things that happens when you have that disk, the uh, enterprise license, you have a projects tab that's added to the ribbon. And what we can see here is what we're looking at, we're looking at a portfolio of projects. And this is the portfolio again. What it's showing is our risk adjusted schedules for all of the projects in our database. Similar to the uh, result Gantt in uh, Risky Project Standalone in the view. We also, so we can take a look, this is what we would call a program or a program here. It's also referred to as a summary project. And when we're looking at this, if we go to the risk register, we're looking at the enterprise or portfolio of projects. And we can see the uh, rolled up score, risk score. It's, we can show what, uh, how the risk is assigned, assigned. If we wanted to go in and get a little bit more detail about that risk assignment, we can actually see which projects that risk is assigned to, and whether it's a threat and opportunity, the chance, and the outcome types. Now these are, um, even though they've been assigned quantitatively and they think in the um, in the projects themselves, at the, at the higher level it's shown as the outcomes are shown qualitatively and that's just uh, uh, for a way of just looking at it a relative risk that we have if we wanted to actually see the risk assignment, we can we can drill down into that project, which we'll show in a, in a little bit. Now, at the portfolio level, we also have a couple of other views that we can see: risk projects. <clears throat> this is a bubble chart of rel that shows the relative risk in your projects. And what we can see right here, if we're uh, we're looking, and I've got it set at the ninety percent. Also, when the, at the results at a very high confidence level. We can see that we have two projects that have quite a high level of, or a high relative level of cost risk associated with them. Uh, not the same with the duration, we can see that. We have one that's got a relatively more duration risk. Uh, one of the things we can see looking at this, it all, it all seems to be centered around this Noel gas, or the ones that have a bit more risk. Again, this is not to say exactly how much risk is in there, but it's a sense of relative risk. So what we might want to be doing is, if we look at this, there may be some way to uh, move some of that risk from some of these higher risk levels to some of these others. Because what we'd like to see is a nice balanced risk, relative risk across all of our projects. And this might be because by resources it could be caused by uh, some other risks that are occurring that could occur during those projects. The other view that comes with the other view that comes with the uh, portfolio is is the uh, project portfolio, and this is actually just a grid view that we're, where we can take out and print out if we wanted to, or pull this data out of all the simulation results we can look across for all of the projects in the in the portfolio 
So all of this data, all the simulation results, so if you've been running these on the, on the desktop client, these could be saved into this database, imported into the database, and, and, sh and shown here. Uh, one of the other things I just take a look, like a look at well, before we drill down a bit is we can see that there is a project uh, a risk score. Now, if we look, <coughs> this one, this is just a, a small project. We've opened that up, but if we go in and we want to take a look at that pro main project information, <coughs> what it does is tells us that we have a lot of more relative risk on this uh, score for duration than for costs. All of the uh, familiar charts and, uh, and reports that we have in the desktop version are available, obviously, in this enterprise version at every project level. So sitting behind the portfolio is, a, is all the results and all these project schedules. <coughs> Again, we want to take a look. We can see the results there. <coughs> now, one of the things, if we want to take a look and see what the risks are like, at, let's say, at the what we call summary project or program level, where the Septimus Gas program level, we can double click there and actually what we see here <coughs> is a bar up there that tells us we are looking at a summary project risk register. And we can see again, like we did at the enterprise level, we can see all the risks that we have. We have their probably risk score. And we can see the risk assignment. Again, if we drill down and take a look, uh, and we can actually again see how these risks are being assigned within that program. And I'm just going to close that out. And a similar thing is available. We don't have a schedule open. A similar thing is available <coughs> at the project level. So again, now we have this bar up here that tells us that we're looking at a project. You can see the entire project schedule. I'll just run a quick calculation. We're <coughs> We'll go down to the result ant, <coughs> and we can see, again, our risk assignment there. But if we go to the risk in the risk register, uh, and suddenly we can see all the how the risks are assigned <coughs> to the project schedule. Now, this one of the things is, what if we look at this, <coughs> we can see that these risks are have been assigned to the project. These risks are available, so part of the uh, risk management and approval processes, they've been <coughs> made available to this project so they can be assigned, but they haven't been assigned yet. They've, obviously, they're not part of this project. We can take a look at that in one of the future videos about how that works. But we can, if we go in and we look at this risk again, we can actually then start to see how it's been quantitatively um, assigned to the projects. So we have it to uh, four drilling activities with a chance of occurring. There are slightly different chances on uh, <coughs> slightly different chance of the uh, risk occurring on, on different activities. And we see the different outcomes, fixed delay, relative cost increase. And again, that gets rolled up. So what we do is we have a portfolio of projects and the project results, either qualitative or, or and quantitative, or, are in the system, are rolled up from the project here. I'm just going to close that. Go back to the project. Up to the summary or program level. We close that. And then all the way up to the enterprise level. As we don't have a bar up there, we know we're looking at the entire thing, at the entire, and we can see that the mechanical problem with the instrument is the highest risk, uh, the highest risk that we have in our entire uh, portfolio of drilling projects.
So that's the quick overview. Uh, we'll be following this up with a bit more detail because I know there will be some questions about that. And we'll try and cover how we set this up, how we set up project permissions, how the risk approval system works, uh, and also about how do we calculate these risk scores and, and how do we set up that hierarchy. Uh, so if you keep, uh, uh, keep your eye out, if you're subscribed to our channel, uh, we'll have some more videos that will show, give a bit more detail about how this portfolio of projects works with our risky project enterprise. Thank you very much, and uh, hope to uh, hope you're uh, see you soon or <laughs> see that you're following us.